Friends, I welcome you back to Kadu Dundagi. My name is Father Peter Lopez. The Diocese of Banjul celebrated uh, a Thanksgiving Mass uh, for a new Pope, Pope Francis. Thanking God for his life and uh, thanking God for choosing him to be the leader of our universal church. All of us were part of this joy. Uh, the Bible says you rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. It was a time of rejoicing and the diocese gathered at St. Teresa's Parish in Carnifing and our own bishop uh, celebrated that Mass. But after that Mass, we spoke to him, uh, asking him about his own reaction, the election of Pope Francis. Take a listen to Bishop Robert Ellison and some of our priests, religious and lady of the diocese. You all know that this is the first time that we have been given a Pope who lives in the Southern Hemisphere. This is a huge breakthrough in terms of a church that has become universal in, in practice and not just in theory. The election of this Pope Francis, as we now call him, has been a major breakthrough, breakthrough for me in the life of our Catholic Church. It is a sign of the <clears throat> coming of the Church in its fullness, because up to now we have had always a European Pope and usually an Italian Pope. Now we have a man coming from a totally different part of the world, the, the world of South America, and strange that he's coming from a very Catholic country called Argentine and still there has been a lot of painful experiences for the Catholic Church in that country because its leaders or some of its leaders have been very very difficult in terms of the freedom of the church to speak out on certain issues. Uh, after you left the Diocese of Banjul and you are sent to Rome to work there, mm -hmm. uh, did you have any experience with uh, our new Pope now, Pope Francis? No. <coughs> I was working in, in our own general house in Rome between 1999 and 2006 before I came here. He came to us, uh, let's say, or he came to the uh, the conclave this year, and he was at other conclaves too, but he came through as Pope uh, most unexpectedly in one sense, and yet we have now discovered that he was number two on the list when Pope Benedict XVI was elected. Uh, but at that time, few people knew about him, even this time, when the news of his election was announced, the big number of people in St. Peter's Square had no idea, most of them, who is this man. And when it was announced his name and where he came from, Argentine in the Southern Hemisphere, well, the few Argentinians who were in the square at that time, and obviously other people, gave him a wonderful applause and a wonderful welcome. Uh, he is uh, a man that uh, many refer to as very humble and down to art. Well, how can you shed light about his simplicity? That is absolutely true. It is a very strange thing to think that he is the first pope to have chosen the name Francis. And you know, he made it very clear, I am talking about Saint Francis of Assisi, not Saint Francis Xavier, who also was a very good man and who was a Jesuit priest. And this new pope is also a member of the Jesuit order. But he insisted on being called after Saint Francis of Assisi. Now I think most people here in the Gambia and in other parts of the world know exactly what that name Saint Francis of Assisi means. As a young man in the age of 20, 21, about in Assisi, he was the son of a very well-off, wealthy, uh, 
trader in Assisi, and at the age of 21, he had a very bad accident, and while he was recovering, he decided he was going to become a poor preacher of the gospel of Christ. Well, he gradually, that was in the 13th century, and he began by gathering a number of disciples around him in that city or town of Assisi, and within 20 or 30 years, he had founded a new order called the Franciscans. They are still a large congreg religious congregation in the world today, and their whole ideology or their whole way of living the gospel is, is a very edifying way of preaching the gospel. Uh, you chose to organize a Thanksgiving Mass mm -hmm. for Pope Francis, our new Pope. Mm -hmm. What is the message that you want to pass to the lay faithful priests and mm -hmm. religious in the Diocese of Banjul and beyond? This Pope arrived in Rome just about two weeks before the conclave. The funny thing about it all this year, the previous Pope hadn't died. <laughs> pope uh, Benedict, he resigned, and it gave the cardinals who came from every corner of the earth a little more time to get ready to come to Rome. There was no funeral of the dead Pope because he's still alive. <laughs> Sure. So they had a full week together to make their choice, and they knew that it was going to be a very important choice for this pope. He is called, he took that name Francis, and he took that name deliberately because he came from Argentina, where there was so much injustice and suffering for the people of that country, and he wanted to, he, he, he was, as you have said, a man of peace and a man also focused on the poor and on the disadvantaged. He was, by taking that name Francis, he was taking the name of a saint whose life was given entirely to the poor in Italy at his time. And so the present Pope, coming from a totally different environment from the southern hemisphere, will make it clear eventually that a lot of the trappings, if I may use that word, that have been part of life in the Vatican, he would be following the, the let's say, the, the holiness or the piety of St. Francis of Assisi more than following in the trend of more recent popes who inherited a slightly different 